All right. Um, so here I want to discuss some of the <clears throat> some of the specific uh, antibiotics that I want you to know. And uh, you know, first thing I want to say is that this is not a pharmacology class, so don't try to memorize all of the information presented here. I uh, will be providing some context, um, but I will uh, highlight. Uh, or, or let you know the specific things that I want you to know for the test. Okay? So, um, we should have talked in class about the different mechanisms by which antimicrobials work and the specific targets of selective toxicity that they have. Um, here I want to talk about what drugs fit into what categories, as well as some... Uh, specific and unique complications associated with certain drugs. So in terms of the inhibition of cell wall synthesis, there are three main categories of drugs. Uh, there are the beta-lactams, and you do need to know that term, beta-lactams. You should know that all beta-lactams have the beta-lactam ring, which is this four-member ring that you see here. You don't need to um, be able to like draw the beta-lactam ring, but you should know what a beta-lactam ring is. You should know that penicillins are beta-lactams, as are cephalosporins. And you need to know that beta-lactams uh, inhibit cell wall synthesis. Um, so that means that they only are going to work against bacteria that are growing. Uh, because, well, when do you synthesize cell walls? Well, you don't synthesize cell walls if you're not growing. Uh, and that's actually true for most antibiotics. Uh, certainly most um, uh, uh, bacteriostatic antibiotics, but even many bactericidal ones just don't work very well against non-vegetative cells. This is one of the reasons why uh, 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 endospores are pretty much immune to most antibiotics and slow growing cells like tuberculosis are often resistant to many antibiotics and require an extremely long course of treatment. Uh, there are two other important classes of drugs that inhibit cell wall synthesis, and I do want you to know the names of these drugs and that they inhibit cell wall synthesis. You don't need to know the specific mechanism of it, but vancomycin and bacitracin. Vancomycin is a uh, is, is like a front-line drug, um, or technically actually a second-line drug. Uh, it's very commonly used for things that are resistant to penicillins, but not necessarily resistant for all um, uh, cell wall inhibitors, but things, things that are, there are a lot of things that are um, resistant to uh, beta-lactams, right? There's an enzyme called beta-lactamase that just cuts through beta-lactams, and it's very common, particularly in, in uh, staph bacteria. Uh, and vancomycin is effective. It has that same cell wall synthesis uh, target, which makes it very uh, good from a therapeutic index standpoint. Um, but it doesn't possess a beta-lactam ring. It's not a beta-lactam. Uh, so it is not... Uh, uh, it's not affected by beta-lactamase. There are things that are resistant to vanco vancomycin. Um, and uh, so it's not 100% effective, but it's a good second-line drug. Uh, bacitracin is uh, a fairly toxic, and I'm actually a little bit less insistent that you know that one. Um, so it's usually only used in topical applications, and it's common in 
um, first aid ointments. For inhibition of protein synthesis, there's like a ton of drugs in this category. I'm only gonna highlight a few of them, uh, but I do want you to know tetracyclines as a class. You should know that they inhibit protein synthesis and that uh, tetracyclines are generally contraindicated for young children because they can cause discoloration of teeth and um, in certain circumstances can, can cause uh, malformation of, uh, of the teeth and jawbone. So uh, that's what I need you to know about tetracyclines. Chloramphenicol. You should also know that chloramphenicol inhibits protein synthesis. And what I want you to know about chloramphenicol is that it is a drug of last resort. It's actually a very effective drug in many cases. Um, and it's effective against a wide variety of organisms. Uh, but, and you need to know this, Chloramphenicol has a rare side effect called aplastic anemia. There's no way to predict in advance that we know of uh, who will have this side effect. And it's rare, but uh, if it happens, you're probably going to die. Because in aplastic anemia, you stop making blood cells of any sort. And like, you can get a transfusion for red blood cells... It might keep you alive for a bit. But if you have a bacterial infection and you stop making white blood cells, well, guess what happens to your immune system? You don't have one. Um, so because it's like potentially lethal and not in very many cases, in less than 1% of cases, but still because like you give this drug and some people are going to just basically die, um, and we don't know who, it's usually given to people who are going to die if you don't get it. Hence, drug of last resort. Uh, for inhibition of nucleic acid synthesis, there are two categories that I want you to know. Um, and... Uh, don't exactly memorize these ones, but be able to recognize them if I use them in an example. Um, fluoroquinolones inhibit topoisomerase, and topoisomerase is found in DNA. It's an important part of DNA replication. Uh, and, um, the, the one thing that I would say that you should know is you should know that ciprofloxin which you've probably heard of as Cipro, um, is a drug in this category. And, um, Cipro is like probably the most recent wonder drug. Um, it is, uh, often a last line drug, uh, not, not exactly a last line of defense, but it's something that we try not to, um, use very often because there are a lot, a lot of things that have resistance to most drugs, but have not yet acquired resistance to Cipro. And we're trying to maintain the usefulness of this drug for as long as possible. There has been resistance that has developed, um, but uh, we're trying to stop the prevalence of that resistance in the bacterial community. So, um, so yeah, we, we try to we try to save this drug as much as we can because we don't want bacteria to get uh, resistant to it. For like certain types of MRSA and Versa. Um, this is like the only drug that works against them still. Uh, rifamicins are uh, useful against mycobacterium, so they're anti-tuberculosis, 
and they block RNA polymerase. Uh, metronidazole, you don't need to know, um, but uh, I'll just mention here that it's uh, toxic only for anaerobic organisms. So you should know the group sulfonamides, and I will probably call them sulfa drugs. Uh, you should know that this is the, the one of two main categories that inhibits folic acid production. Uh, trimethoprim also inhibits folic acid production, but it does it in a different way. So these two drugs are often prescribed together. Um, I'm, you know, less insistent that you know trimethoprim, but if I refer to the sulfa drugs, you should know that the sulfa drugs inhibit folic acid synthesis. That's a definite. Uh, and we have a whole list of drugs that are specifically for tuberculosis treatment because as an acid fast bacteria, um, tuberculosis is naturally resistant to many antibiotics. Because tuberculosis grows so slowly, it's resistant to a bunch of other antibiotics that um, that rely on inhibiting components of, you know, bacterial growth. Um, so we have a set of drugs that, that basically specifically target acid fast cells. Uh, so isonazid, you should recognize as inhibiting mycolic acid synthesis. So that's specific for acid fast. Um, FM butol, which inhibits enzymes for cell wall synthesis, and pyrazinamide, we don't know how it works. Um, but the, the two things that I want you to know about this category is uh, you should be able to recognize asanazid as being specific for tuberculosis, and rifampin that we mentioned earlier is, um, also not specific for tuberculosis, but does work on tuberculosis. These two drugs are uh, often prescribed together. And in fact, uh, the, the rifampin plus these three are the first line drugs used preferentially against mycobacterium tuberculosis. As far as antiviral drugs now uh, go, um, there are two general classes that I want you to know. Uh, acyclovir, which you should be able to recognize the name of. Generally speaking, uh, drugs that end in veer are antiviral. Um, <clears throat> so acyclovir works by uh, it's, it's target of, spe or it's a specific toxicity is based on the fact that, um, this drug is harmless unless activated by a viral enzyme. So viral enzymes should only be present in viral cell or virally infected cells. So this drug will only become activated in virally affected cells and it also preferentially binds to viral DNA polymerase, um, preventing viral DNA from replicating. Acyclovir is uh, commonly used in herpes and herpes family virus treatments. Uh, so that's what it's known to be effective against. It also has uh, a kind of general antiviral activity. So it has some antiviral action against a number of different uh, viruses um, 
particularly viruses that are somehow structurally related to the herpes virus family. Antiretroviral therapy, or ART. So retroviruses is the family of viruses that contains HIV, and HIV is the main uh, member that we use them to treat, although they do have some, some of them have some uh, functionality against other classes of viruses as well. Uh, I don't want you to know the specific names of drugs here, but I do want you to know the four classes, okay? Uh, so the first class are fusion inhibitors. These work by, well, inhibiting fusion. They prevent the virus from getting into the cell. The second class are reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Uh, and so for retroviruses, they are RNA viruses that have to turn their RNA into DNA. And the enzyme that does that is reverse transcriptase. If that is a, um, that's an enzyme which is found in viruses, specifically in retroviruses, although sometimes in other viruses as well. And, uh, it's not something that your cells normally use. So inhibiting reverse transcriptase is a very good and reasonably effective means of preventing viral replication. Uh, though I should say that retroviruses and RNA viruses in general are well known to mutate quickly. And so resistance against reverse transcriptase inhibitors does evolve rapidly, especially if they're used on their own. The third class is integrase inhibitors. And these inhibit an enzyme called integrase, which is what's going to splice the newly made viral DNA into your genome. These are pretty specific to retroviruses because that's... That's a, a, a key feature of how retroviruses work, is they, they turn their RNA into DNA and then they integrate their DNA into your genome, becoming a provirus. Uh, and the fourth category is protease inhibitors. And these inhibit an important step in viral maturation. Um, for HIV specifically, and, and retroviruses specifically, um, the, their proteins are actually all made in one big chain. And then in order for those proteins to become functional, uh, this protease enzyme has to cut this into several different proteins that are now unlinked from one another. Um, there are a number of viruses that use this motif. And so protease inhibitors uh, sometimes have cross reactivity. So uh, there are protease inhibitors that work against herpes virus, uh, herpes family viruses and um, hepatitis C as well. So I want you to know basically those five things about antiviral drugs. For antifungal drugs, um, I uh, want you to recognize, you don't need to memorize it, but if you see it, you should recognize it as being an antifungal Amphotericin B. This is a polyene uh, that disrupts, that targets the fungal membrane. Fungal membranes are pretty similar to, um, to our membranes because we're both eukaryotes and so these have a very low uh, therapeutic index. 
Amphotericin B is used internally against systemic infections, but it is extremely toxic and causes severe side effects. So it's usually only used in life-threatening situations, and often you have to be uh, you have to be monitored sort of constantly in order to make sure that the antifungal drug itself isn't killing you. Um, azoles and alilamines. And azoles, it, any drug that ends in azole is an azole class drug. Um, both of these inhibit synthesis of ergosterol. And uh, so the imidazoles as well as alilamines are toxic enough that they're just really not useful internally for systemic infections and are only used topically. Whereas triazoles are used internally. Um, don't memorize all of that, but I do want you to recognize azoles probably specifically azoles, as uh, antifungal drugs that inhibit ergosterol. Um, these last... Uh, these last three categories, I really just want you to know the categories. I don't need you to know the names of the drugs. Um, but you should know that there are antifungal drugs that inhibit cell wall synthesis. These are the echinocandins. Um, they're um, often reasonably useful. Uh, there are drugs that inhibit cell division. We um, think that they probably interfere with tubulin, which is a cytoskeletal component. And we don't know exactly how they work, but they are very low selective toxicity, very low therapeutic index, and are mostly used for skin and nail infections. And uh, nucleic acid synthesis, and this one I do want you to know the name of flucytosine, um, because it is a commonly prescribed drug, and you should know that flucytosine is an antifungal, um, and it is often combined with amphotericin in order to reduce the amount of amphotericin necessary that you need. You don't need to know that last bit, um, but uh, you should know that flucytosine is an antifungal drug. All right. Uh, I hope that wasn't too much stuff for you to know. Again, kind of like focus on just those things that I highlighted. And um, don't spend too much time memorizing all of that. Um, the, but you should be able to recognize that. Uh, so like if... I use, uh, if I say which of the following drugs would be most appropriate to use against uh, fungal meningitis, right? Uh, then you're going to want to, and, and if amphotericin B is on the list, you should be able to recognize, oh yeah, amphotericin B, I remember that. That's an antifungal drug. And there's probably only going to be one antifungal drug on the list, right? Um uh, do specifically want you to know that chloramphenicol is the one that causes uh, uh, aplastic anemia and is a last line of defense drug. And you should definitely know the sulfa drugs and, and how they work. Um, those are two things that definitely will, will be on the test. Uh, but the... Uh, and the other stuff might be on the test. It will probably be more of a recognition rather than a you need to know this. Okay. I hope that's helpful.